One day, in the summer of 2011, Barry had puffed into the sheds. He had just returned from pulling a goods train, and he wasn't in a good mood. Hello again, Barry. Hi, Edward. What's wrong? Well, I was pulling a goods train, but the trucks made me derail into a field. Well, that sucks. I'll say. I wish I could try to do something about those trucks. If only we could. But we can't stop doing jobs that involve trucks. Why not? Because that was the same mistake that Diesel 11 made. Who? He was an engine who was built using plans from a BR Class 42. He was also very cruel and evil. How bad was he? Perhaps we should tell you. Thomas, would you do the honors? Of course, Gordon. The story of Diesel 11 takes place long before you came to the island. And this is the story Thomas told. The year was 1976. The Northwestern Railway had 49 engines, but they were feeling rushed off their wheels. The back controller at the time was Sir Stephen Toppenhat, who was Sir Richard Toppenhat's father, and the third controller of the Northwestern Railway. One day, the fat controller came to see the engines. Good evening, engines. I have very good news for all of you. What is it, sir? I can see that you're all rushed off your wheels, so I am planning on building a new diesel to help you all. The engines were worried. They knew that sometimes diesels could be troublesome. He will be built using plans from a British Railways Class 42, and will be fitted with a hydraulic claw, which is able to move scrap, fallen trees, and other debris from the tracks. Don't worry, rest assured we have had permission to add that to his design. But sir, will he be a nice engine? I don't know, but we'll never know until he has been built. In the meantime, all of you should carry on with your jobs until the diesel has been built. For the rest of the years to come, the engines were worrying about the new diesel. They hoped he wouldn't be as bad as the other diesels, because the last thing they needed were more diesels on the island causing nothing but trouble. It wasn't until 1977 when the new diesel was complete. He rolled into the sheds and onto the turntable. The vac controller stepped out of his cab and introduced him to the engines. This is Diesel 11. He shall be given a trial run before I decide to make him a Northwestern Railway member. Please make him feel welcome, and show him how to do everything. And with that, the fat controller left. The engines all stared at the diesel. He was unlike any other diesel they have ever met. He had black paint, gray stripes, and a gray claw on his roof. He also had red eyes, which seemed very unnatural, and very sharp teeth. The diesel surveyed the sheds and the engines who rested in them. Hmm, not bad, I suppose. At least you're all clean. Excuse me, what? Oh, I don't blame you, really. You all look rather old and out of date. I am 11 times stronger than any of you. The sooner I show everyone how strong I am, the sooner they'll see how useless and pathetic you all are. How dare you! The engines all started shouting rough words at him until the manager calmed them down. That night, the engines all held an indignation meeting. Disgraceful! Disgusting! Despicable! This is worse than the time when that class forte came to the island when Stephanie Formas visited Sodor. I don't know. I say you report him to the fat controller Tamara. Just then, Diesel 11 arrived and came to the sheds. And just what do you lot think you're doing? What does it look like, Mr. McCreepy? We're going to report you to the fat controller tomorrow. Do that, and I'll do exactly what this claw can do to you lot. Observe. Ah! 
Get the picture. The engine stared in shock. How? How in the manufacturer did you do that? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Now shut up and let me rest. The engines did. They were now afraid to tell the fat controller about the diesel. As the days passed on, Diesel 11 became more horrid to the engines when the fat controller was away. He bumped them about, threatened them with his claw, and biffed the coaches around like trucks. Even his driver was terrible. He dumped garbage all over the engine's smoke boxes. Ah, oh, scrap! You can say that again, Bob. He switched the points, causing the other engines to crash into buffers. Yikes! And he also took away their engines and made them ride roughly. No! Oi! Not so hard! Coaches aren't trucks, you know! Ha! <laughs> On the day before the end of the Diesel's trial, the engines have had enough. Diesel 11 wasn't in a shed, which was lucky, because the engines all start to make a plan. Well, that settles it. We'll have to make a plan for how to get rid of that Diesel. But how? The Diesel will kill us if we tell the Fat Controller about him. Don't worry. My driver and fireman have gone to see the Fat Controller. They're going to tell him the news. Meanwhile, the Fat Controller was having tea when the doorbell rang. Bother that doorbell. He opened the door and saw Edward's driver and fireman. They told the Fat Controller about Diesel 11 and his driver. The Fat Controller stared with his eyes as wide as golf balls. I can't believe the new Diesel is blackmailing my engines. I should never have built him. But those extra features on his claw, I never ordered them to be built into the claw, nor did I ask them to be made. My guess is that some railway thieves and scientists made them and stored them onto the diesel. How they managed to get their gadgets to work I'll never know, but that doesn't matter now. That diesel shall regret the day when he blackmailed my engines. The Fat Controller started making a plan to get rid of Diesel 11. The next day, the diesel saw the Fat Controller. Diesel 11, I want you to go to the yards and take some trucks to the Inofa Quarry. Diesel 11 snarled. Trucks? Why can't any other engine take them? You will do as you are told. The Diesel grumbled and cursed, but he went to the yards anyway. When Diesel 11 arrived at the yards, he grumbled impatiently as Logan shunted his trucks. Come on, you slacker! Hurry it up! We can't wait all day, you know! It took a while, but the trucks were coupled up, and Diesel 11 rolled away. As he rolled down the line, he got a very evil idea. Every wise engine knows that you should never delay the express, and that you shouldn't stop on the main line. But Diesel 11 and his driver were getting tired of pulling trucks, and they wanted to stop. Driver! Stop the train! Gladly! I'm tired of doing this rubbish! Diesel 11 stopped, right on the main line. The driver then exited the diesel and left. But what neither of them knew was that that was a big, big mistake. Gorn was pulling the express, and he was on the same line Diesel 11 was on. No one knew about the trucks on the line. Just then, Gorn saw the trucks on the line. What the? Driver! Brakes! The driver put on the brakes, and Gordon screeched to a halt. <sighs> Thank the maker. Now what the smelters yard are those trucks doing there? The passengers got out and were very cross. What is the meaning of this? Whoever's in charge of this goods train needs to move. The passengers all argued with Diesel 11, but he just rolled his eyes. Before he could vaporize any of the passengers with his claw, a voice shouted out louder than the passengers. Silence! Everyone turned around. There stood the Fat Controller. 
He glared at Diesel Eleven. Diesel Eleven, I am not at all happy with what you have done today. Because you stopped on the main line and delayed the express, you have made my day very difficult. Yes, I know. I'm a bad engine. You'll punish me. Blah, blah, blah. And what's more, you've been blackmailing my engines and been very rude to them. That made Diesel Eleven very shocked. Who told you about that? While the engines were asleep, Edward's driver and fireman told me everything. Diesel Eleven's driver tried to get into the Diesel's cab to do something to the fat controller, but Goran's driver and fireman stopped him. Diesel Eleven, I cannot have blackmailers on this island. And when other engines blackmail my engines, the punishment is very, very, very severe. You will be taken away to the scrapyard where no one will bother you again. Diesel Eleven's mouth had hung open for hours after hearing that. What happened after that? After the incident was dealt with, James, Eagle and Edward took Diesel Eleven away to be scrapped. As for his driver, he was taken away to prison for 50 years for violating railway regulations. I doubt we'll ever see Diesel Eleven again after that. But when that bloody Diesel left our island, our controller told us that another engine was to be built using the identical plans used to build Diesel Eleven. We had hoped he would be a lot nicer, but sadly, we were wrong. The Dieter who was built? Who was he? His name is Diesel 10. The engines were about to tell Barry how horrible Diesel 10 was when the fat controller, Sir Richard Topham Hatt, came to see them. Engines, I have some good news and bad news. The bad news is, is that James has had an accident and is going to have a rebuild. Also, Emily has recently left to go to the Blue Bell Railway, but the good news is, two engines shall fill in for them while they're away. One of them has been saved from scrap. Who are these engines, sir? I've contacted the Blue Bell Railway, and their controller has agreed to have Stephanie return to the island until Emily comes back. The engines were excited. They haven't met Stephanie since 1985, and they were looking forward to introducing him to the newer engines. The other engine is coming here right now. The sound of a diesel approaching was in the air. I wonder who that could be. Wait, that horn sounds familiar. I think I've heard it in 1977 while I was pulling passenger trains and... Suddenly, Everett's face went slack. No, it can't be him. But it was. Hello, guys. Miss me? You! Diesel Eleven looked around the sheds. All the engines stared in shock. Impossible! You were scrapped in 1977! You know, I'm quite surprised you're all saying that about me. Besides, did anyone ever tell you that I was scrapped? Well, no, not really, but we assumed that I was never scrapped. Though I feared the day that I would. I was cast onto a siding, just waiting for the scrapper's torch to interact with me, but for some reason, it didn't. Even though they were brave enough to take away my powers, whenever the scrapper saw me, they turned and ran away as if I scared them. I can imagine why. But the important thing is that I'm back, and I won't have to sleep in this place anymore. Later, suckers! And Diesel Eleven left. Beg pardon, sir, but what's Diesel Eleven doing back here? You know how bad he was back then. Yes, I am aware of the trouble he caused when he was last here. But he was the only engine on the scrapyards I had the money for. But don't fret. If Diesel Eleven ever pulls an unforgettable stunt like Lee did last time, I shall send him packing. On the other hand, though, Stephanie should be coming back to the island tomorrow. The Fat Controller was right. The next day, Stephanie came back to the island. On the way to Napford Station, he saw Gorn in the station with the Express.
Hello again, mate. Good to see you again, Stepney. You look worried, Gordon. What's wrong? Gordon told Stepney about Diesel 11. Oh dear, that Diesel sure does sound bad. I know. Last time he was here, he delayed the express, all because he refused to pull a good string. Take no notice of him, Gordon. One day, that Diesel will get what's coming to him. And when the guard's whistle blew, Gordon left. Stepney then continued his journey to Nafford Station. Meanwhile, at the yards, Diesel 11 was assigned to do some shunting work. The trucks were giving him a hard time. Look here! There's all my life! Yeah! Oh, it's so scary! I don't know if it's as claws that's scarier, or his face. His claws scarier! No, his face The claw! The face! The claw! The face! The truck's argument went on and on, until... The claw! Silence! The trucks gasped. From the nearest batch of trucks, another diesel came from behind. He looked exactly like Diesel 11, except his claw was a tannish brown and he was painted all of green. His face resembled the other engine's faces, and he didn't have red eyes, but his expression was menacing, as if he spent all his life shunting trucks with no rest. His name was Diesel 10. All right, you trucks. If I hear you make fun of my appearance again, ow. Then he saw Diesel 11. Both Diesels were shocked. Then they eyed each other suspiciously. You look familiar. Funny, I don't remember seeing you before. And I don't recall seeing you either. I'm Diesel 10. I am the one who drives Terra and do the hearts of steam engines. Diesel 11 stood, his mouth hung open after hearing Diesel 10 say that. No fair, that's my title. Well, too bad. Because it's mine now. He then winked at Diesel 11. This made Diesel 11 cross. The two Diesels started shouting at each other. The manager came to put a stop to their bickering. Later at night, at Timmy's sheds, Stepney came to see the other engines. He backed into an empty berth next to Douglas. Hello again, Stepney. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everyone. After being introduced to those in the sheds that he had met, Stepney decided to tell the others about what he did today. I was coming to these sheds after taking a passenger train from Tidmouth to Ellsbridge, but I ran into that diesel Gordon told me about. What'd he do? He gagged at me as if I disgusted him and said how awful old engines like me smelled. How dare you, I said. Engines like me are still useful all the same. And then we got into an argument until the signal dropped and I left. What did you and that diesel say? Words I don't wish to repeat. Oh. Anyway, I think he should be reported to the Fat Controller for being so aggressive. Yeah, but the last time we told that diesel that we were going to report him to the Fat Controller, he threatened to vaporize us. So don't tell him then. Have your drivers tell the Fat Controller instead. We did, but that was years ago, when our controller was Sir Stephen Topham Hatt. I think Diesel 11 will try to make sure that doesn't happen again. Good point. Does anyone else have any better ideas? Unfortunately, no one did, but Percy spoke up. We could trick him into sucking up a bowler hat! Percy, I doubt that would work. Besides, there are very few people who wear bowler hats nowadays. Oh. Well, I'm guessing we're doomed then. A few weeks later, Diesel 10 and Diesel 11 arrived at the Vickerstown Diesel Works. There they met Ari and Bert, who were BR Class 08 diesel shunters. Ari and Bert took an interest in Diesel 11 when they learned that he hated steam engines too. When they learned that his claw was able to generate red electricity and use it to vaporize almost anything, the two diesels were intrigued to know about how this came to be. 
So, I hear your claw has strange powers. Yes. The last time I used them was back in 1977. How is it possible that you are able to use them? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try us! Diesel 11 was silent for a moment. Then he spoke. You mustn't tell anyone about what I should tell you. Got that? Sure thing! Right here! And you? <sighs> oh, sure. Good. Well, it all started in the year 1975. I was nearly complete at the time. I was conscious at the time, though I tried not to show it. I was aware of how incomplete I was. I still needed everything from my blueprints to be fitted on me. But then I heard a diesel shunter enter the steamworks. I cautiously opened one eye, and saw some strangers exit the brake van of the shunter's train. The leader climbed out of the brake van. Alright you lot, get these materials out. Tonight we're going to make some weapons that'll change the world of transportation forever. Excuse me? The strangers jumped. They saw me. Beg your pardon for startling you lot, but what are you doing? Funny you should ask. We are some scientists and weaponists who are looking forward to accomplishing a dream of taking weapons to the next level. Should the island be at war, these weapons shall be our number one objects to use against the enemy. And we want you to be our first person, or Diesel in your case, to use these weapons. Well, I'm honored, but I don't know how to use these weapons or what those weapons are. No need to wait, my friend. We started work on our weapons not too long ago, and they're almost finished. We will use this place for where these weapons will finish completion. What are these weapons called? They don't have names yet, but they are all a part of a project I call Project Armed Rails. It needs someone like you to be its bearer. Why me? We were not respected for our ideas, and lots of people claimed our ideas were impossible and rejected us. They wouldn't let us use their means of transportation for experiments. Then I, a thought came to me. I thought, what if I could test Project Arm Rails on an incomplete locomotive? It so happens that you are the only locomotive on the island that is currently being built, and I couldn't risk asking the railway staff for permission to use it, because if I did, they would refuse right away. So what do you say? Will you test out Project Arm Rails? Will you make my dreams come true? I pondered this for a moment. It all seemed too unrealistic for me, but then again, I did hear of some engines with hydraulic features like water cannons and crane arms, and I'm even being fitted with a claw. I then thought, what if I could use them if I wanted to? I could be the most famous diesel of all. People would fear me, and if they dared to speak negatively about me, I would use the weapons on them. I grinned. I accept. Excellent. Alright you lot, get to work! The strangers set to work, and I saw them inventing strange gadgets. Then they performed experiments with some sort of lightning they were somehow able to collect. It looked like lightning, but it was red. The leader explained to me what it was. This is Ares Lightning. It's a rare type of lightning from a railway hidden by magic. Not many people believe in this railway, but I've been there. And this red lightning is the only proof I have of that railway's existence. What is this railway exactly? We're not entirely sure, but we do know that engines with magic powers run it. I see. How did you collect the Ares Lightning? Although Ares Lightning is not completely similar to normal lightning, it can be harnessed the same way normal lightning can be harnessed. Gold can be an excellent conductor of electricity, and we were surprised to see that the gold canisters we were carrying could easily contain the Ares Lightning. Now that is cool. It took a while, but eventually the weapons were complete. They stored them onto my claw, and after a few tests, they finally got them to work. The leader wore a bandana that covered his mouth, so I didn't know if he was smiling, but I was pretty sure that he was when the tests were complete. 
Well, it looks like Project Armed Rails is a success. Thank you, my friend, for participating in this test. You're welcome. By the way, I never really got your name. Well, I was never given a birth name because my parents never loved me. But my friends here, they call me Sniper. Hmm. Interesting. Well, anyway, we'd better leave. You can keep the weapons, but don't tell anyone about them. Oh, don't worry. I won't. And I never did tell anyone else. Airy, Bert, and Diesel 10 stared in shock and amazement. Wow! That's some story! I know, right? All three of you will swear not to tell anyone about it, will you? Of course! Anything for a Diesel like you! Yeah, what he said! Well, I suppose I won't bother to tell anyone. Good. Now, I believe the Falcon Controller is coming to see us about our jobs. As of on cue, the Fat Controller arrived. Diesel 11, you must work with Edward and Porter at the harbor. Salty's engine is in need of repairs. The harbor needs you to fill in for Salty until he comes back. <sighs> yes, sir. Diesel 11 didn't like working with Edward, as he was one of the engines who took him to the scrapyard, but he knew better than to argue with the Fat Controller. Besides, he thought, he wanted to make sure the Fat Controller keeps him on the island, so he could continue to drive fear in the engine's souls. Wait, do engines have souls? I don't know. Anyway, Diesel 11 left the Diesel Works. When he got to the harbor, he found Edward shunning some trucks with Porter. Well, looks like I'll be walking here. Yeah, don't think I didn't know about you. Edward told me what you did the last time you were on Sodor. Please don't do anything stupid. Oh, don't worry. I won't. But secretly, Diesel 11 wanted to have revenge on one of the engines who took him away to the scrapyard. He had heard from Diesel 10 that James, who was one of these engines, was having a rebuild, so he couldn't take his revenge on him. He also heard that James' older brother, Eagle, was working on Arthur's branch line, and as Diesel 11 was at the docks now, he couldn't take revenge on him. He wanted revenge on all three of the engines who took him to the scrapyard so they would feel his misery. He decided to start with Edward. As soon as they were working, he knew he couldn't plan his attack yet, because first, his new driver wouldn't allow it, and secondly, his weapons were disabled by the scrappers when he was taken to the scrapyards. And third, he would have to have an old friend of his to help him do it. Later, the harbor master came to the engines. I'm sorry, you three, but the points are jammed, and they will have to be fixed tomorrow. You'll have to sleep in the dock's sheds tonight. Edward was disappointed, but Diesel 11 pretended to be sad. This was exactly what he wanted to happen. That night, Edward and Porter went to their sheds to sleep. Edward was in Salty's shed, as the red diesel was absent. Well, good night, Porter. See ya, Edward. Porter went to sleep, but before Edward could, a thought struck him. Diesel 11 was supposed to be in his shed, but he wasn't. He probably must be getting oil and fuel, he thought. Minutes passed, then hours. Finally, Edward couldn't stand it anymore. He waited until he saw his driver and fireman walking past his shed to go home. They saw Edward's face, and they knew he looked troubled. They walked over to him. What's wrong, Edward? Don't you find it odd that Diesel 11 hasn't come back to his shed yet after hours? Well, yes, I guess. I suspected that he was getting oil and fuel, but normally a diesel shouldn't wait that long unless another diesel is in the way, and there aren't any other diesels here. You're white! Something must be up! We should check it out. Agreed. The driver and fireman started up Edward, and he set off to find the diesel. Fog rolled in, and Edward and his crew began to get nervous. They could hardly see but they wouldn't give up. 
Hello? Is anyone here? No one responded. Then a horn sounded out from behind Edward. That's odd. Ships can't travel on rails. But this one can. Oh no. Driver, get us out of here! But it was too late. No! Surprise! Edward's driver and fireman lay dazed and surprised in Edward's cab. What the? How? A man stepped out of Diesel 11's cab. He wore a black fedora and bandana, and had swords strapped onto his back, and he was carrying pistols. Stick him up! The driver and fireman climbed out and waved a white flag. Just then, three more diesels approached Edward. It was Ari, Bert, and Diesel 10. Well, well done, done, boss! Well, as much as I don't like you, I'll have to admit, using the fog as hiding places is a really good way to spring the trap. Diesel 11 ignored him. He turned his attention to Edward. Bet you weren't expecting that, were you, you old fart? What do you think you're doing? And who is that who's threatening my crew? They call me Sniper. I'm an old friend of Diesel 11 here, and he had some of my friends contact me into helping him. I agreed, and here I am. So, what do we do with this old steamy, boss? I've got a grand idea for what we should do. Sniper, blow him up. Sniper aimed his pistols at Edward, but before he could shoot him, a ghostly whistle sounded out. What the heck was that? For a moment, Everyone stayed where they were. Even Sniper didn't dare fire his weapons. Then, it happened. Yikes! Let's beat it! You said it! Hey! Where are you going? Don't leave me behind! Lance, we're making a dent in my engine! Hey! Stop pushing me! Wait, we're doing no yeah! Ow. Back at the docks, the fog lifted, and the next morning, Stephanie came over to put Edward back on the rails. Ouch! Are you okay, Edward? Yeah, aside from the fact that Diesel 11 made a dent in my boiler, but I'm okay. Then the fat controller climbed down from Stephanie's cab. We'll have you repaired and rebuilt, Edward, but we cannot do it now, since James is in the steamworks already. But I do have good news. His rebuild is almost complete, and that means you could go to the steamworks tomorrow. That's great, sir, but can I please make a request? Of course. Can I go to Timoth's sheds while I wait for James to come out? I don't want to spend the rest of my life laying out in the cold for my time to get rebuilt. Very well. Then, he remembered something. Oh, and I also want to let you know that I've spoken with the Bluebell Railway's controller, and he told me that Emily is going back home from doing Stephanie's work, so I'm afraid Stephanie will have to return there as well. I see. But sir, there's something else I want to tell you. What is it? Edward told him about Diesel 11, and about what he did before today, in the weeks that James was at the Steamworks. Why didn't he tell me this early? It was Stephanie who replied. Well, sir, it's because of what happened last time he was here. We didn't want to risk telling you because we were afraid that he would kill us. The Fat Controller smiled warmly. Do not worry. Diesel 11 has not shown any signs of killing you. But know this. When something is bothering you, always tell someone you can trust about the problem. That made the engines feel better. Later, after Edward was put back on the rails, Stephanie shunted him back to Tiffin's sheds. As for Diesel 11, the Fat Controller had words for him that were just as severe as his dad's when he was in control of the railway, and Diesel 11 was left in the shed in disgrace. Meanwhile, at Tibnet's sheds, Stephanie shunted Edward into his berth. The sheds were empty, except for Emily, who had just returned from the Bluebell Railway. She was very shocked to see the dent in Edward's boiler, and panicked. Oh my gosh! Edward, what happened? Stephanie and Edward told Emily everything about what had happened in her absence, 
from Diesel 11 returning, all the way to Diesel 11 being left to rust in an old shed. Good riddance, that's what I say. But, Edward, what will happen to you? Tomorrow, I'll be going to the steamworks to be rebuilt. Okay, I hope you get better soon. Me too. Well, I hope you get better too, Edward. But, I'm afraid I have to get back to Napford Sheds to rest. Then tomorrow, I'll go back to my railway. Good luck. Thanks. Stepney then puffed away. Edward then remembered something that happened before Diesel 11 came back. Since Emily was at the Bluebell Railway when the incident happened, and he wanted to get her mind off the den in his boiler, he decided to ask Emily about it. Did you hear about James's accident? Meanwhile, at the city of Vickerstown, Diesel 10, Airy, and Burke were relocated to the smelter's yard to shunt trucks for three weeks as punishment for helping Diesel 11. As for Sniper, he was taken away to the Coldy Fell Detention Center for interrogation. And when October came, Edward came out of the steamworks in a new shape similar to his old one. Life on Sodor had returned to normal, but the engine's adventures were just beginning. So you're here too? Yes. And how did you get here? They caught me messing with the controls of a signal box. They said I caused an accident that severely damaged a locomotive. <sighs> Son, you're a very reckless young boy. You never learn when to wait for the right moment to strike. But no matter. You will learn patience during your time here. But father! You just can't sit here and do nothing! You could bust out here yourself. You can do that, right? I could, but that would only delay my plans for this island further. What do you mean? I have plans for this island, Kuzo. Plans that will change the future. And you're going to be part of it all. All we need is patience. Hmm, fine. When is the perfect time? How long were you sentenced to be in prison for? Five years? Why? I was sentenced to be here for six years, but it won't matter. Soon, we will bust out of this place. I promise you that, my son. But until then, do your best to be patient while we wait. Very well, father. 